Hey everybody, it's Charlie from Daily Motor, and we moved to a new place a few months ago and no longer had easy access to a 240 volt charger for Alyssa's 2023 Bolt EUV. So we've been spending the last, ooh, actually it's been almost six months now at this point, charging primarily off of a 120 volt outlet. Now we do have access to a 240 way back in the garage, but because of my affinity for motorcycles, <laughs> the garage isn't necessarily always easily available to Alyssa, and she kind of prefers parking in the driveway anyway. It's easier for her to get in, get out, go about her day-to-day -day commute. So today we're going to talk about what is it like living on 120 volt charging, level one charging, if you will, with your electric vehicle. Can you do it? Should you do it? And what things do you need to consider? We've had our long-term 2023 Chevy Bolt EUV for well over a year at this point. And this is the third vehicle that we've had here at Daily Motor that we've owned for over a year and uh, kind of wanted to report on what the ownership experience is like. However, our last two vehicles, the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Maverick, were both very eventful vehicles. The Tesla Model Y was the first standard range Model Y at the time. We had one of the very first ones that we bought. There was a lot to report on with that car. And then our Ford Maverick, we did a bunch of accessories with, a bunch of different tests with it and, and hauling various things, doing different activities. And then it ended up breaking on us and stranding us in Albuquerque, New Mexico. The opposite is true of our Chevy Bolt EUV. This car has been so predictable, nice, and straight up boring that there's virtually nothing to talk about here after a year of ownership. We've put on over 10,000 miles. We've averaged about 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Alyssa uses it daily for her commuting purposes. And when I asked her, I was like, honey, it's about time to shoot a, an ownership update on the car. I mean, you know, 10,000 miles, over a year of ownership. Is there anything new to talk about with the Bolt? And all she had to say was that she gets annoyed by the fact that when you back it out of the driveway or a parking lot, for example, and then you put it into drive, the camera stays on until you get up to a certain speed. So if you're doing something like looking at your navigation, you don't get your nav coming up until you get up to a certain speed. This can be frustrating when you're in a new parking lot, trying to go somewhere, you don't know what direction you need to go. Other than that, she's loved the car, I've loved the car. Uh, what else have we done since we had it? We put in a new set of speakers, you can check the link below for our video on that, made it sound a little better for her at moderate listening volumes. But we've taken it in for a single service visit at the Chevy dealer that they cover, just in order to rotate the tires and make sure everything was good with it. It's about due for another tire rotation now because I do know Alyssa loves taking off quickly with it. And then obviously all of the regen as well. It's gonna be doing a number on these Michelin, what do we got, Michelin Primacies I assume? Michelin Energy Saver all seasons. Let's see, our front's a little more war than our rears at this point. Uh, you know, not too bad. They feel, they feel fairly balanced still, but we should probably get them rotated. So, I, I was trying to think, what all can I talk about with the Chevy Bolt? And a video that I've thought about a few times and I've finally now decided to do is, can you live on 120 volt charging for your electric vehicle? Okay, before we get too far in, a lot of people probably know quite a bit about electric vehicle charging at this point, but for those of you who don't, the what you need to know is there are essentially three different levels of EV charging. There's level one, which is your standard 120 volt wall style outlet right here. There's level two, which is a 240 volt outlet, which you can see right here. This is, I believe, a 30 amp, but they go various amperages. Uh, most common you're gonna see is a NEMA 1450 amp. And then you've got level three, which is your either Tesla supercharger or your Electrify America, uh, kind of 50 kilowatt and over DC fast charger, which the Chevy Bolt right here can only support up to 50 kilowatts, but some of the other electric vehicles these days are going all the way up to 350 kilowatt charging compatibility. And again, the main difference right there with level three is the voltage. You're looking at 400 or up to 800 volts of charging infrastructure there, as opposed to all the way down to the 120 that we're talking about here today. Obviously, level one and level two charging is the only sort of charging you can expect to see at home. And the reason why level one is so relevant is that it's virtually in every garage or in many parking situations that you're gonna encounter. I mean, here in our garage, we've got 
level one chart plug there, there, uh, another one over there, one there, there, and over there. So there are tons of areas that I could plug the electric vehicle into. However, for our level two plug, we were lucky that we even had an electric dryer plug here, which a lot of newer homes have, but it wasn't the right outlet. So we actually have to use an adapter when we plug in our level two charger. We could have gotten things rewired or something, but this charger was able to kind of support that adapter and that's what we're running with. But a lot of people are going to have to spend either a lot of money or don't have access to any sort of 240 volt charging infrastructure at their home. So the question is, okay, can I get away with level one charging only? Some electric vehicles come with a charger provided by the manufacturer, such as this Bolt EUV, came with this nifty charger from General Motors that supports both level one and level two, but a lot of electric vehicles are no longer coming with a charger provided. I don't think Tesla does anymore, the Hyundai Kia products don't, so you might very well be in the market for a charger that you can either use at home or use on the go, or maybe both. And this is an example of one of those. This is the TechNet 32 amp both level one and level two charger, 120 or 240 volts. Let's open it up right here and see what we've got. TechNet, this is something you can buy right from the link below. It'll help support the channel out a little bit. And should have a pretty sizable charger here. Now mind you, this was sponsored by them. And if the product doesn't work very well, I'll let you know, but a lot of these chargers uh, work similarly. However, this one so far seems to be pretty straightforward. You got a little mounting thing. It actually comes with pretty decent mounting hardware. That's nice to see. You're going to want some drywall anchors like this, some pretty serious Phillip head screws, because really I shouldn't have the charger just hanging from the wall like this. I should have it mounted up somehow. So maybe we'll actually mount this TechNet one properly. Okay, we got a little uh, plug spot as well. So this can go into the wall. So what you do is kind of have something like this and this and then you could mount the charger right there and then cable it up and stick it in that's that's pretty nice that's, that's some quality stuff right there especially for a sub 200 dollars charger all right what else we got okay nice little screen i like to see that and this one's supposed to have some app support as well which is going to be important for dialing down our charging rates now let's take it out okay long cable and our adapter this is this is how they're going to handle going from the level two plug, the 240, into the 120. And here is our TechNet charger. Let me get this cable wrapping off. Okay, this is a 25 foot long cable. So theoretically, I wonder if we could even have it plugged into our 240 plug and then have it go all the way to the driveway. That would be kind of cool. Wow. Let me see. All right, we're going to. Uh, I'm going to pull this out here. This is pretty far. This is even past the driveway. Okay, plugs into the car fine. Okay, so I think an average garage size is about 20 feet. This is how you can see a 25 foot charger would look. I think maybe if I pulled the car right up to the garage door, it might be close. But it looks like this is sort of the situation. Like I was telling you, your 240 volt plugs are not always in a convenient spot. So we're going to utilize the 120. Interesting. I wonder if the charger detects that I'm using the adapter. Let's try, let's try not having it plugged into the car first. Ooh, now this is interesting. You have to kind of wrap it around like that. Bring it to life. All right, we got this little screen telling us the charger temperature. It's not plugged in. No Wi-Fi connection. It's, uh, 120 volts and no power. This is actually gonna be really convenient for me doing what I do, tracking how much power goes into a vehicle because I need to keep track of that. All right, let's plug it in see what happens. Oh wait, do I need to manually dial down the amperage? Oh, okay, so this is actually really cool. I can do 16 amps, 13, 10, or eight amps. Interesting, okay. And then this is a timer you can change the time to, to have it run for a certain amount of time or, or wait to start charging a certain time. All right, I'm going to plug it in. We're going to start at 8 amps and see if the car starts taking it. We've got a green flashing light. 7.8 amps. All right, right where it should be at 119 volts. Very good, very good. 
I wonder if I can bump up the amperage right here while it's charging. No, I cannot. Okay. Car says it is charging. Charge complete by 12.30 a.m. tonight. Now, I'm going to unplug. And we're going to bump up the amperage. Typically speaking, you want to be running at no more than 80% of the amperage that the circuit is supported for. So, if we go to our breaker box and take a look and see what sort of fuse that one is running on. It's a 20 amp circuit. Okay, so that means that theoretically speaking, we could run at 16 amps safely and not trip the breaker. However, some people are gonna be concerned about maybe an older house or, or running the, the electricity that hot for that long. It theoretically could wear things out faster and have a little bit higher chance for a fire. So for that reason, you might wanna keep it at something like 13 amps, 10 amps, eight amps, but let's just, you know, let's just see what happens. Let's dial this up to 16 amps and uh, see if the car and the charger and the house will take it. Now, this is actually also something that you have to be aware of is the bolt itself and many of the other electric vehicles actually uh, throttle the charging on their own end. So I think right now the bolt is set to only accept up to 8 amps at 120 volts. So let's go home here energy level one cord limit okay so the bolt will only take up to 12 amps from the level one cord now let's hop out and see what the charger's running at there it is the car's taken 12 amps at 117 volts technically 12.1 so even though the charger can support up to 16 amps at 120 the car is sticking at 12. So let's start talking math a little bit here. I'm gonna adjust my numbers that I had formulated before the video. If we were to continually use this TechNet charger, 117 volts times 12.1 amps, we're looking at about 1.4 kilowatts, which means we get 1.4 kilowatt hours after the car's been plugged in for an hour. Now the bolt's running at about four miles per kilowatt hour for ease of math sake, so 1.4 times four. You're looking at over five miles of charging per hour that the vehicle's plugged in. Now, yes, that doesn't sound like very much. However, if Alyssa gets home from work at 6 p.m., she plugs the vehicle in, lets it charge until she leaves the next day at 8 in the morning, that's 14 hours that the car is plugged in for. So 14 times, let's just say 5 to be generous, you're getting 70 miles of range back for every night that the Bolt is plugged in. And for her, that's been more than enough for the time that we've lived here. Because like I said, she's on an average day only doing about 12 to 15 miles of driving. And then if we go and, and take the car and do something with it in the evening and there's less time for it to charge and she's doing more miles, say we do 40 or 50 miles in the car for the day and it only has 12 or 10 hours to charge up, then yeah, maybe she's just barely getting it back. Or there's those situations where we've used her car for a long period of time in the evening and then uh, maybe it needs an extra 100 or 150 miles of range put back into the car. Yes, she doesn't get all of that back in one night, but over a few nights of charging throughout the week, she gets back up to full, technically. We haven't been charging the vehicle all the way to full. We've only been charging to about 90% state of charge. So for a lot of people, if this is a second sort of vehicle, or if you have access to other vehicles, or you really don't do much driving, 120 is going to be totally fine for you and, and that's why we've even had this vehicle running at a little bit of a lower amperage for charging because it's been more than enough every night for Alyssa to simply plug in here. Now that being said, it's still important to have access to a level 2 or a level 3 charger for situations where what if we had to take this vehicle for a lot of driving one day and then we're going to have to do a lot of driving the next day. Then you've sort of got a few different options. One, you can operate like we do where we have level two charging at the house as well. So I could take this tech, tech net charger, remove the adapter, plug it in to our other adapter there to our 240 volt, and then the car would charge up at about 30 miles of range per hour. It'd be totally charged up within a few hours overnight. Another option would be if you have level charging at your place of employment. So if Alyssa had level two charging at work, then it wouldn't really matter if she went a day or two without charging here at home. She could top it off while she's at work very quick and be ready to go when she leaves the workplace. 
And then the third option is utilizing level three chargers around your community. If you live close to some sort of level three charging station, then yeah, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. You can fire up even this slower level three charging at 50 kilowatts for the Bolt EUV. We could still go over there for an hour and get the car filled back up to a usable uh, amount for the next day, even though we've only got the 120 volt at home. Okay, so what if you don't have a remarkably efficient vehicle like the Chevy Bolt EV? What if you have the opposite end of the spectrum, something like the GMC Hummer SUV that gets about 1.5 miles per kilowatt hour in mixed driving? That's only gonna get you a mile and a half to two miles per hour of charging. So over the course of a whole night, even 14 hours, you're only gonna be looking at 25 miles roughly of range put back into that Hummer SUV. So. Yeah, if you do just a small amount of driving every day, like again, in Alyssa's situation, she'd probably still be able to get away with only using 120 volt charging for the Hummer. However, if you're gonna be doing a little bit more driving, a little bit more around that average commute length, you're probably gonna want to have level two charging at home. Fortunately though, the Hummer does have a much faster DC fast charging rate. So you could go to a level three charger in those situations where you need the extra juice and then charge it up much quicker and uh, you could technically get away with only living on a 120 wall style outlet with something very inefficient but it'd be a little tougher it'd require a few more lifestyle tweaks whereas for something efficient like your standard tesla model 3 model y chevy bolt um, nissan leaf hyundai ionic 5 ionic 6 ev6 even the mustang mach e any of those sort of vehicles for your average daily commuter you could probably get away with just charging on a wall style outlet like this, a little standard 110. And I know because we've done it. So thank you all so much for watching. If you wanna pick up one of these TechNet chargers, check the link below. I think they're on sale right now for something like $180. It's always changing. Right now it's Black Friday. I don't know when you all are gonna actually see this video. If you wanna see more on our Chevy Bolt EUV, check the link below for a full video list on this. Like I said, we've been really happy with it. It's been a nice, straightforward car, and sometimes that's just what you need. And if you have any questions about charging, drop them in to the comments below. I'll try to get back to you, but the rub is definitely you can survive with level one charging in a standard commuter sort of situation. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie from Daily Motor, and as always, drive on. Mm -hmm.